buried treasures, forgotten tombs, and mystic curses. These are the secrets of ancient worlds waiting to be uncovered. Dive into the shadows of history where shocking secrets and hidden truths are just begging to be revealed. These are the most shocking ancient secrets. First off, we have the ancient secret of Mount Vesuvius eruption. On August 24, 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius, which had been inactive for centuries, erupted suddenly at 1 o'clock p.m. Many in Pompeii were unaware of the danger. The eruption began with a large cloud rising into the sky. As burning ash covered Pompeii, chaos ensued. In Oplontis, a wealthy family sought refuge in a basement with their valuables to avoid robbers, but they perished in the eruption. Experts think that after this family died, another group stole their valuable things because everything wasn't destroyed right away. Volcanologist Dougal Jerram notes that the eruption occurred in phases, not instantly. Initially, white ash accumulated over seven hours. By 8 o'clock p.m., the eruption intensified as new magma emerged, indicating deep geological changes. By the next morning at 7 o'clock, the eruption reached its most destructive phase. The ash layers changed drastically, with varying particle sizes and evidence of fast, chaotic flows. This top layer of hardened ash indicates a deadly flow of hot gas and debris known as a pyroclastic flow, which obliterated everything in its path. Moving along, we have the secret behind Roman city. Archaeologists are puzzled by the city of Neapolis because there aren't many ancient records about it. For 15 years, Dr. Munir Fantar has been trying to solve this mystery. Even though old records mention Neapolis had a trading port, Dr. Fantar couldn't find any proof of it when he searched. Then, in 2013, a big storm near Nabul in the southern Mediterranean uncovered strange structures underwater. After examining closely, they realized these structures were parts of an old Roman city, like blocks, pillars, and the bottoms of buildings. Using a drone, Dr. Fantar saw that these underwater ruins matched the ones on land, showing they were from the same Roman town. This discovery suggested that Neapolis was a much bigger city than they thought. That helped find where the harbor might have been, showing how important Neapolis was for trading. Next, we have the secret of Pompeii's people. In ancient Pompeii, there was no police, so people had to take care of their own safety. The old ruins of the city show it was a place where crime was common and people were often afraid. Since there were no banks and no way to get back stolen things, stealing was a big problem. Life was hard, especially for the poor, and sometimes breaking the law seemed like the only way to survive. Historical records and writings on the walls show that the people of Pompeii sometimes acted as their own police. For example, a message found on a tavern wall talks about a stolen bronze pot. The owner offered a big reward of 65 sesterces to anyone who could return it, showing that people had to handle thefts themselves. If a thief was caught, they could face harsh punishments from the community. In some homes in Pompeii, trusted slaves, who were as tough as fighters, were given the job of guarding the house and dealing with troublemakers. Groups of people in Pompeii, like gangs today, would sometimes join forces to punish bad people on their own. In a wealthy Pompeii neighborhood, experts are exploring a 2,000-year-old mystery. They suspect that some very wealthy people were targeted by thieves right as Mount Vesuvius erupted and buried the city under ash. Evidence shows that Pompeii residents were really worried about keeping their valuable things safe from thieves. One major find was a heavy-duty safe in a warehouse where several bodies were discovered. Archaeologists believe this safe belonged to the property owner and was meant to secure valuables. This fancy safe, with its complicated lock, shows how far rich people went to keep their stuff safe. 
This safe was so well constructed that only a massive disaster like the Vesuvius eruption could break it open. Elsewhere in Pompeii, crime was common before the eruption. Historian Kevin Dikas studied the remains of a guard dog that died while chained, likely left behind to guard a house from looters as the owners fled. This gives insight into how seriously Pompeii's residents took home security. But wait, there's more. King Solomon, known for his immense wealth, might have left a clue to his riches. Mines in Timnath, southern Israel. These mines were active around 3,000 years ago during Solomon's time, but they weren't digging for gold or silver. Instead, they were copper mines. The area is filled with black slag, the leftover waste from copper smelting, showing how much copper was produced there. Copper was precious back then, and it was used to make tools and weapons. Copper changed the game in history. It marked the first time people took metal from rocks to make materials. Dr. Muhammad Najjar, who studies ancient copper production, explains the challenging process of heating copper ore to high temperatures. A clay bowl with charcoal needs continuous air blowing to keep the fire hot enough. This hard work resulted in pure copper, marking a significant moment in human history when people began creating their own resources, almost like becoming creators themselves. In a remote bog, a family of farmers stumbled upon a startling discovery while digging for peat. One of them struck something hard prompting his wife to caution him to be careful. They unearthed a remarkably well-preserved human body clad only in a cap and leather belt with a noose around its neck. Initially mistaking it for a recent murder victim, they called the police. However, upon examination, experts determined that the body was ancient, dating back over 2,400 years. Referred to as a bog body, it had been naturally preserved by the peat bogs of northern Europe. Bog bodies, preserved in the wet and acidic bog environment, offer a unique glimpse into the past. Unlike normal ancient burials with just skeletons, these bodies still have skin, organs, and even facial expressions. That's because of the cold and acidic conditions in the bog. Further analysis of similar bog bodies has revealed signs of violent deaths shedding light on ancient mysteries. By using methods like the ones detectives use today, scientists are getting better at figuring out what happened in these ancient cases. In the mid-19th century, the Amazon attracted traders, miners, and missionaries due to its rubber and minerals. Many people moved close to Shu'ar land, and some made fake shrunken heads to sell to excited traders and adventurers. They often made up stories to make the heads seem more valuable. A head in a museum, acquired in 1915, was claimed to be from a male shaman who failed to cure a child and was killed by the child's father. This tale was believed until 2016 when the museum conducted DNA tests on the head. The results revealed it was actually a female's head, not a male's. In Shu'ar culture, only male warriors' heads were shrunk to prevent their spirits from seeking revenge, as women were not warriors. The DNA results showed that this was a shrunken head made for sale to meet the interest of people in the Victorian era who wanted unusual things. The woman was likely murdered not due to tribal conflict, but for profit. Last but not least, at Gobekli Tepe, a place with detailed stone carvings, many Stone Age people gathered a long time ago. This might have been one of the first times people started to have organized religious ceremonies. This idea challenges what we used to think, that religion only started in settled communities. Dr. Rain de Neef, an expert in old plants, looked at things left behind at Gobekli Tepe. He found proof that people there were starting to grow their own food. They were growing grains like einkorn and barley, some of the earliest grains ever farmed by humans. 
researchers also found that the einkorn grown near Gobekli Tepe today is similar to the ancient wild grains. This suggests that people first started growing einkorn near Gobekli Tepe. Dr. Neef thinks people at Gobekli Tepe were already starting to farm them. They were trying out farming, and at the same time, they were building impressive stone structures. This shows that Gobekli Tepe was a good place for starting to grow plants, which was a big change in history. So, there you have it. Ten shocking ancient secrets that reveal fascinating, eerie, and mysterious truths from our past. Each secret uncovers a piece of the puzzle, giving us a deeper understanding of ancient civilizations and the lives they led. Keep exploring, and who knows what other secrets we might uncover from the ancient world. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you really want some more of that history crack.